test 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 going live right now ladies and gentlemen boys and girls welcome to episode 32 of the callous mind talking head live cast with yours truly callous mind in today's video we're going to talk about a variety of things but the first thing I wanted to talk about was how uh, uh, real life mimics art and this could very well get this video taken down almost immediately but we're gonna do it anyway so uh, for those who haven't seen the movie Tangled it's a Disney movie and it is uh, actually very very entertaining and I would recommend it to anybody but uh, we're gonna watch a clip from this real quick here and then I'm gonna show you how real life imitated this art so here we go waited a long time for this oh mama I have got to get me one of these <laughs> <laughs> so here here's the real life example of that right here Not necessarily new. It came out a couple of days ago. Uh, there is a man who went down to a protest where you can, uh, in case you don't know, you can see the Antifa people by the all black and then pink ski masks. Ah, Usually yeah. a good sign. Yeah. Usually if you're an all black and a ski mask, you're probably the asshole, folks. <laughs> <laughs> probably. But a guy goes down there. Uh, right now I'm just referring to him as, as, as base frying pan man. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, if you haven't seen this, it made my day. You murdered Jesus. The guy with the cigarette. Watch him. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I love it. Ow. <laughs> Hold on a second. Can we play it again? Oh my god, that is absolutely hysterical. I love that. And uh, the link to both of these will actually be in the description box of the video uh, because I give all creative credit on this to, to Crowder. So uh, this is just something I saw and I wanted to share uh, with my audience. So uh, having said that, let's go ahead and jump into uh, today's story, stories, I should say, plural. And um, this one is pretty sad. Uh, Ex-Hawaii record-setting quarterback Colt Brennan dead at 37. Man. Hang on one second here, and let me uh, just turn off my desktop volume again, so no random videos play. Uh, Colt Brennan, who set numerous NCAA records as the quarterback of the University of Hawaii, has died. His father, Terry Brennan, told the Star Advertiser he was 37. His father said Colt Brennan was in his fifth month at a rehabilitation facility in California when he was found unconscious. He died Monday at a hospital in Newport, California. He was doing so well, the spark was back in his eyes, and he was healthy and doing great, and it happened, Terry Brennan told the newspaper. Terry Brennan said family was at Colt's side when he died. Colt Brennan's run of success from 2005 to 2007 helped put Hawaii football on the map. He passed for more than 4,000 yards three times, including... 5,549 in 2006. That season, he set the single season record for touchdown passes with 58. The record was surpassed by Joe Burrow during the 2019 season. Brennan is fourth all time in career touchdown passes with 131. Br Brennan finished sixth in Heisman voting in 2006 and third in 2007. The 2007 team finished the regular season 12 0 and 10th in the Associated Press poll before losing to Georgia in the Sugar Bowl. Brennan was taken to the, in the sixth round of the 2008 draft by Washington, but injuries prevented him from playing his rookie year, and he was released. He never played in the NFL. A 2010 car accident left him with a traumatic brain injury that made it difficult to continue his football career. He tried to catch on in the USFL, Canadian Football League, and Arena Football League, but didn't stick. Brennan had a series of legal troubles in recent years, including arrests for driving under the influence. In 2020, he was arrested at a hotel for causing a disturbance while intoxicated. A few months later, he was arrested at his own home in Hawaii for another disturbance, during which police said he was extremely intoxicated. So, 
There you go. Rest in peace, Colt Brennan. I thought this next story would probably interest Adam. Uh, I just saw this come up on ESPN this morning. Oakland Athletics to start looking at relocating elsewhere. So my question would be, Adam, how does how, how do you feel about the A's relocating, or does it really matter? Uh, this from 11.16 a.m. The Oakland Athletics on Tuesday said they will start exploring the possibility of relocating with the blessing of Major League Baseball a move that could put pressure on local government officials to greenlight a new stadium project that has spent years in limbo. The A's, who have played in Oakland since 1968, have prioritized building a waterfront stadium in downtown Oakland at the Howard Terminal site, but after years of failed stadium plans and weeks after the organization asked for the city council to vote on the $12 billion mixed-use development before its late July summer recess, the long-anticipated specter of the A's looking into relocation became a reality on Tuesday. The future success of the A's depends on a new ballpark, A's owner John Fisher said in a statement. Oakland is a great baseball town, and we will continue to pursue our waterfront ballpark project. We will also follow Major League Baseball's direction to explore other markets. The A's are the lone remaining major professional sports team in Oakland after the NBA's Golden State Warriors moved across the Bay to San Francisco and the NFL's Raiders left for Las Vegas. Their pursuit of a new stadium to replace the now 55-year-old Ring Central Coliseum has included multiple sites in Oakland, alliances with Fremont and San Jose, and two decades without a groundbreaking. The Howard Terminal Project, in which the A's have proposed privately funding a $1 billion stadium and spending more on a development that would include 3,000 units of affordable housing, office and retail space, and a hotel in the latest effort has been seen as the likeliest to succeed. After the A's outlined proposal, which the organization said would include $450 million in community benefits, $955 million in general fund revenues, and an $855 million commitment from the city for infrastructure improvements, a spokesman in the mayor's office said in, late, in a late April statement, the city is willing to bear its resources to help make the vision a reality. However, today's proposal from the A's appears to request public investment at the high end of projects of this type nationwide. The office of Oakland Mayor Libby Schaff did not return messages seeking comment. The athletics lease at Ring Central Coliseum runs through 2024, and rebuilding at the Coliseum site, seen by some as a possibility, is not a viable option for the future vision of baseball, the league said in a statement. Major League Baseball is concerned with the rate of progress on the A's new ballpark effort and with local officials and other stakeholders in Oakland. The statement said, the A's have worked very hard to advance a new ballpark in downtown Oakland for the last four years, investing significant resources while facing multiple roadblocks. We know they remain deeply committed to succeeding in Oakland, and with other sports franchises recently leaving the community, their commitment to Oakland is now more important than ever. The Oakland Coliseum site is not a viable option for the future vision of baseball, we have instructed the athletics to begin to explore other markets while they continue to pursue a waterfront ballpark in Oakland. The athletics need a new ballpark to remain competitive, so it is now in our best interest to also consider other markets. While Major League Baseball has been loath to expand, multiple cities have publicly expressed interest in a franchise. The likeliest possibility of the A's, if the A's do pursue relocation, would be Las Vegas which has found success with the Raiders and the NHL's Golden Knights, but Commissioner Rob Manfred has in the past also cited Portland, Oregon, Vancouver, British Columbia, Nashville, Tennessee, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Montreal as potential expansion sites for franchises. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't the Montreal Expos moved to Washington, D.C., and uh, are now the Washington Nationals. So why do we move teams from one place just to consider giving them back? Now, the Cleveland Browns were the exception because that owner 
Art Modell wanted to uh, move the Browns from Cleveland, and then Cleveland ended up getting an expansion team. And as far as I know, you know they uh, they support their teams. But Montreal, my understanding of why the Expos left Montreal to begin with was because of the lack of support. So they moved to Washington D.C. and became the Washington Nas- Nationals, and have since uh, won a World Series. So I, I really don't see. Uh, Montreal getting another team. I think they would be way, way at the bottom of any list, but that's just my own personal feeling on that particular matter. So, all right, I know I have some uh, other stories for you guys as well, so just bear with me here while I kind of look at my episode outline here. And since Adam had brought up the story uh, about Aaron Rodgers last week, and then we kind of talked about it, I have uh, kind of another story about that here on my list. All right, so the next story up, Los Angeles Angels designate slugger Albert Pujols for assignment. This was from May 6th. Late Wednesday night, after watching another game from the bench, Albert Pujols was summoned into a room with Los Angeles Angels President John Carpino and General Manager Perry Manassian and was informed that his near-decade run with the team was coming to an abrupt end. The following morning, the organization announced it had designated pool holes for assignment, a procedural move that will lead to pool holes released by the end of the week, barely two months into the last season of a 10-year, $240 million contract. And just a quick word on that contract. Uh, by today's standards, that seems uh, actually reasonable compared to uh, the crazy-ass numbers these guys are getting today. So. Manassian, in his first year as the Angels GM, said the decision was dictated strictly by the Baseball Operations Department. Jared Walsh, a 39th round pick, has continued his evolution as a highly productive hitter and was providing more dynamic defense at first base. And Shohei Otani, a two-way player who has become one of the game's most menacing hitters, has solidified the designated hitter spot on an everyday basis. Pool holes with an OPS 80 points below the league average in his age 41 season had no place to play. It's more about opportunity, Manassian said. Albert is not a bench player. We felt like for him, with respect to him, keeping him on the bench, him not getting any playing time would not do him any good or the team any good. Pool holes is steadfast in his desire to continue playing, and he has let that be known to Carpino and Manassian during their meeting, but the opportunity seemed limited, if not non-existent, with no DH in the National League. The Chicago White Sox jumped out as a potential landing spot given the presence of Tony La Russa's, uh, uh, Pujols' former manager with the St. Louis Cardinals. 
but your mean Mercedes has been a revelation as the team's DH. Uh, and there's actually been a story come out about this whole um, pool holes to the White Sox, and apparently the White Sox uh, had said they were, were not interested. I don't know if uh, oh, they don't seem to have that one linked in here, but there was another story. Uh, the Kansas City Royals, who reside near Pujols' hometown in the United States, might be an option. So might a National League team like the Cincinnati Reds, who could be without Joey Votto for a month after the veteran first baseman fractured his thumb. The Angels talked about different options with Pujols on Wednesday night, but designated him for assignment was the most agreeable to all of us, Carpino said. The team wanted to honor him in some way, but it would be awkward to do so before he announces his retirement. He wants to play every day at first base, Carpino said. His passion is driving there. He, he really believes it, and I'm happy that he has that strong belief in what he does. Pujols had actually been playing more than many would have expected. Dexter Fowler's season-ending knee surgery had prompted Walsh to spend time in right field, which made Pujols the first baseman for 17 of 20 games, heading into Wednesday's matchup against Tampa Bay Rays lefty Ryan Yarbrough who was scheduled to handle the bulk innings. A few days earlier, Angels manager Joe Madden told Pools he would play all week, but things changed, Madden said. When he realized he wasn't in the lineup, Pujols approached Madden in his office and expressed his displeasure, but Madden stressed that that was not ultimately what ended his tenure. Manazian said he and the front office had been talking about the possibility of releasing Pujols for the past couple of weeks. He came to me, we had the conversation, we knew exactly where I was standing on the entire situation, and thus what happened last night happened, said Madden, who wasn't involved in the discussion with pool holes after the game, but there was no tipping point involved. This was a decision made. Pool holes was making $30 million this season, ranks fifth in career home runs with 667. Second in RBI since they became an official stat in 1920 with 2,112 and 14th in hits with 3,253. He has won three NL MVP awards, two gold gloves, six silver sluggers, and has been invited to 10 All-Star games. His first decade with the Cardinals consisting of a 331, 426, and 624 slash line, 408 home runs with two, uh, 1,230 RBIs stands as arguably the greatest 10-year run in baseball history. In year 11, he finished fifth in National League MVP voting and won his second World Series ring. But his prime didn't really make it to Anaheim. Pujols began his Angels career with a mystifying drought of 27 games without a home run. He recovered to post a highly productive season in 2012 then had his 2013 season cut short by plantar fasciitis and wasn't necessarily the same thereafter. Pujols averaged 30 home runs and 105 RBIs from 2014 to 2017, but his slash line dropped to 257, 310, 448. From 2018 to 2021, he batted 239, 290, and 414 and was worth a total of negative Point one baseball reference wins above replacement. 24 games into the 2021 season, he was batting 198. The Angels wanted Walsh to return to his natural position of first base, prompting Manassian to make a shocking recommendation to ownership. In a statement, Angels owner Art, Artie Moreno wrote that the team was honored that he has worn an Angels jersey for nearly half of his Hall of Fame career. Albert's historical accomplishments both on and off the field serve as an inspiration to athletes everywhere, and his actions define what it means to be a true superstar, Moreno's statement said. Since his rookie of the year season in 2001, Albert and his wife Deidre have generously given their time and resources to countless charities throughout the world. We are thankful to the entire Pujols family. Pujols is one of only two players, along with Hall of Famer Hank Aaron, to reach 600 home runs, 21 RBIs, and 3,000 hits, and he is the only player in baseball history 
with 3,000 hits, 600 homers, and multiple World Series titles. Pujols reached 500 homers, 600 homers, 3,000 hits, and 2,000 RBIs with the Angels. And most of the signage honoring those accomplishments will remain at Angel Stadium, Carpino said. Despite the criticism of the contract, which didn't help the Angels win a single postseason game, Carpino called Pujols' stint with the Angels tremendous. He, he's just had an amazing amount of historic accomplishments while he was here, which the fans cherish, Carpino said. It was a happy day, the day we signed him, and yesterday's conversation was difficult. The Angels World Series champions of 2002, division champions five times from 2004 to 2009, under longtime manager Mike Sosha, looked like World Series contenders when they shocked the winter meetings contingent from Dallas in December of 2011, signing pool holes and our all-star catcher C.J. Wilson on the same day. Later that season, Mike Trout emerged as one of the game's best players. But the Angels fell short of the postseason, unable to overcome a slow start. They followed by adding Josh Hamilton and a quartet of veteran pitchers and promptly imploded in 2013. The year after that, the team recovered 198 games and claimed the AL West, but were swept by the upstart Royals in the first round. The Angels haven't been to the playoffs since, largely because they have been unable to build an adequate pitching staff. Manassian represents the third GM since Pujols joined the team, while Madden is the third manager. Madden raved about Pujols' work ethic, noting that he exhibited the same zeal on a daily basis. So, this thing goes on, but I'm not going to go on with it. Uh, you guys get the get the idea, and if you want to read it, it'll be linked in the description box below the video. And, pardon me for one second. And now, since uh, Adam had kind of brought this up last week, and uh, we talked about it near the end of the show, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it a little bit more. Uh, this was from May 6th. John Kuhn says Aaron Rodgers conflicted about future with Green Bay Packers. If anyone understands what Aaron Rodgers is thinking as he weighs his NFL future, it might be former Green Bay Packers fullback John Kuhn. Kuhn says... He has talked with Rodgers since the news broke last Thursday of the reigning NFL MVP's unhappiness with the Packers organization. During an appearance Wednesday night on the Zach Gelb Show on CBS Sports Radio, Kuhn said he wouldn't disclose the exact details of their conversation but painted a picture of a quarterback who is evaluating all aspects of the situation and hasn't made up his mind for certain. He's conflicted because this man loves to play the game of football, this man loves to be a Green Bay Packer, and this man truly sees careers, Kuhn said after or during the interview. He's watched friends leave, he's watched Brett Favre's career toward the end, he watched all these things play out in front of his eyes, he's taken notes throughout his career, he's seen some situations that didn't feel were done or finished the way that they could or should have. He's just trying to take his earned destiny within his own hands. To that effect, I actually admire him because not many players in the, NFL, in the NFL have the opportunity. I sure as heck didn't. I played until everybody told me you can't play anymore, and it's a humbling feeling. Aaron Rodgers has an opportunity to take a little bit of that power. Kuhn, a regular golf partner of Rodgers, played for the Packers from 2007 to 2015 before returning to the organization to do some media work. After his retirement, the former fan favorite offered a more optimistic outlook for Rodgers' return than a suggestion earlier Wednesday from Favre, who said, who said his gut told him that if there's not a trade, Rodgers would rather sit out than play. So, there you go. I guess uh, it's still developing. So... This is another sad story from uh, May 6th. Texas Longhorns linebacker Jake Ellinger found dead off campus, police say. Texas linebacker Jake Ellinger, the 20-year-old younger brother of former Longhorns quarterback Sam Ellinger, was found dead on Thursday, according to police in Austin, Texas. The Austin Police Department said 
It received a call at 12.18 p.m. local time and responded to the 1200 block of West 22nd Street, a residential area just to the west of the Texas campus, and identified the individual as Jake Ellinger, who was a redshirt sophomore. No cause of death was released, and police said the death was not considered suspicious. The loss is another tragedy for the Ellinger family. Sam and Jake's father, Ross, died in 2013 during a triathlon in San Francisco from a heart attack at age 46. Both sons dreamed of playing for the Longhorns after growing up as season ticket holders. Only five days ago, Jake was celebrating with Sam, their sister Morgan, and their mother Gina after Sam was drafted by the Indianapolis Colts in the sixth round. Texas coach Steve Sarkeesian called the death a tragedy beyond measure. Words cannot express the depth of our sadness and the huge void we are feeling, but above all else, our hearts pour out to Sam, Gina, Morgan, and the entire Ellinger family. Sarkeesian said in a statement, Jake was a tremendous person and was everything you could ask for in a student athlete. Being a Longhorn meant everything to him, and he truly embodied all that it means to be one. Jake played linebacker at Texas for two seasons. In 2019, Sam talked to reporters about running out of the tunnel with Jake in the brothers' first game together at UT versus Louisiana Tech. Unreal, Sam said. We have been dreaming about that our whole lives. Colts owner Jim Ursay offered his support in a statement. I know how close they were, and we're just really stunned. But we are prayerful, and we know God has a plan, Ursay said. We are doing everything we can do to console the family and do what we can to make things as easy as possible at this difficult time. from a sad story to a positive story this was from May 8th former NFL defensive end Brandon Bear saves man after fiery train crash former NFL defensive end Brandon Bear saved a man from a flaming semi truck minutes after it had been struck by a train according to East Idaho News Bear said he Bear said he was driving on Highway 20 in St. Anthony, Idaho on Thursday when he saw a train plow into a semi-truck, triggering an immediate explosion. After calling 911, Bear was spurred into action after hearing a voice from inside the truck, which had caught fire following the crash. It, it was a conscious decision that, I, I'm, that I'm going in because he needs my help right now, Bear told East Idaho News. I ran up to the window and saw dripping hot flames all over inside the truck. I could see a guy in a seat belt and was able to to reach him and get him uh, get it off him. He was talking. I told him we had to get out of here now. There's a pick, man. That's unbelievable. Bear said he climbed halfway into the wreckage and pulled 25-year-old Stephen Jensen out through a rear window between the passenger seat and the driver's seat. We walked away and within seconds the fire on the roof fell down inside and the whole seat and cab went up in flames, Bear said. A few minutes later there were a couple of big booms and explosions. Jensen was airlifted to an area hospital and was in stable condition as of Friday morning according to a hospital spokeswoman. Bear 36 signed as an undrafted free agent with the Kansas City Chiefs in 2011 after a collegiate career at Oregon. He went on to play for the Philadelphia Eagles and Oakland Raiders before retiring in 2015. So that's a that's a pretty cool story. And here's one that uh, goes on. This like this was from recent. I really didn't plan on talking about it, but since it's here, I'll go ahead and <laughs> talk about it. What does Jaguars coach Urban Meyer see in Tim Tebow to sign him now? Tim Tebow is headed to town. The Jacksonville Jaguars are expected to sign the former University of Florida star within the next few weeks, reuniting him with his college head coach, Urban Meyer. He'll be a tight end, though not a quarterback, which means he'll be 
learning a new position six years after he last participated in an NFL practice the 2015 preseason with the Philadelphia Eagles. Moving to tight end was something NFL teams wanted Tebow to consider after he failed as an NFL quarterback, but Tebow was adamant about staying behind center. Nine years after he last played an NFL regular season game, he's willing to make the change. Why is Tebow returning now? Tebow clearly wants to remain a professional athlete since the baseball thing with the New York Mets didn't work out. This is his best shot, mainly because of Meyer. Meyer and Tebow won a pair of national championships at Florida from 2006 to 2009, and they've remained close, so it shouldn't be a surprise. Mayer agreed when Tebow called and asked him for a tryout earlier this year. It's hard to imagine many other NFL coaches or general managers would be willing to give a 33-year-old who hasn't been a part of the league in six years a tryout at a position he has never played. <laughs> what are Tebow's chances of making the team? Not great. He played tight end on a handful of snaps with the New York Jets back in 2012. He has not been asked to block linebackers or defensive ends snap after snap. He has never caught a pass in college or the NFL. His only career NFL target is below. Tebow is a very good athlete, and he's going to put in the work and extra work, but he's starting from ground zero. All right, well, there you go. All right, so let's see what's cracking over here. All right, so Adam's over here. Love the A's, but haven't watched them for decades. I loved watching Callous Mind cry hysterically every year when Conseco and McGuire would hit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, how the tides have turned, my friend, and I'm no longer a long-suffering suff Red Sox fan because we've, we've won plenty of titles recently, so uh, it's all good and groovy now, baby. But, yeah, you're, you're right. That was... Uh, those A's teams with McGuire and Conseco and Carney Lansford and Baylor and Henderson. I mean, they, you know, the, the, those teams were no freaking joke, son. And it's funny, you know, because I remember um, I had talked to some Dodgers fans uh, who were my rideshare passengers, and I said, you know, this was before the Dodgers won last year's World Series, and I said, you know, I, I still distinctly remember the Dodgers winning that 88 World Series, and and being, uh, you know, Conseco hitting the grand slam off the camera in like center field or whatever in game one, and then uh, the whole uh, Kirk Gibson home run and all that stuff. So it's uh, it's amazing, but yeah, I don't I don't get to watch much anymore either. But uh, I still just kind of check the box scores and and that. But uh, anyway. Next Tuesday is my daughter's last day of school. So that next Tuesday may actually be the last uh, Callous Mind live cast for a while. And I may be transitioning to uh, releasing previous uh, or uploading uh, previously recorded videos. But uh, in the meantime, I think I'll go ahead and wrap this show up. Thanks for uh, watching, Adam. Thanks for contributing. Uh, I want to send a shout out to all the other viewers. Uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Please be good to yourselves and each other. And uh, take care of yourselves until next time. So until next week, God bless, and I'll talk to you soon. Later.